Howdy my totally tubular spooky gamers and today we're doing another ranking video. Today we're going to be looking at the entire Silent Hill series. We looked at the original four titles by Team Silent and then we looked at all the later titles that were by the Western developers. We're putting them all together, we're just going to be ranking all the Silent Hill games. Silent Hill, do I really need to explain to you Silent Hill? If you're watching this video and you don't know Silent Hill, maybe you should look it up. It's one of the most popular horror franchises. Consider one of the greatest pieces of horror media of all time. The original four games are pretty beloved. After that, bit of a mixed bag, but Silent Hill in general is still one of the most beloved franchises by Konami and one of the most beloved franchises in horror. People love these games for their graphics, their atmosphere, the story, the gameplay. People just really love this series, especially how it does its storytelling. And people have thought these games are scary for years, myself included. Before I started working on this video, I had never even touched a Silent Hill game. I bought a bunch of them many, many years back for the cheap, but had never actually played them. And after playing through all of them, I can tell you there's a reason this series is so legendary and so many people have goaded it. And today we're ranking all of them, from worst to best, whether it's the later games, whether it's the old titles, doesn't matter. They're all here, they're all together, and this list is now going to be outdated as Konami announced four new Silent Hill games. There's probably more in the works, regardless of whether they're good or bad. It's cool that someone cares about the series, besides the fans at this point. And we're just going to be looking at everything here. The graphics, the story, the horror, the gameplay. How does it hold up? Is it clunky? Is it bad? We're just looking at everything here. Now with a series as legendary as Silent Hill, I'm sure almost everybody's going to have a different opinion on the entire series. So let me know down below your list, your favorites, your least favorites, why, why not, etc. I'm always reading the comments. Now, a lot of my opinions haven't really changed on these games since the last video, so if you've watched the previous two videos, you're going to be pretty familiar with how I feel about these games. Regardless, like, share, sub, comment, all that good stuff, what do I think is the worst of the Silent Hill games? What really is at the bottom of the barrel for Silent Hill? Unfortunately, I think the worst of the Silent Hill games is Silent Hill Book of Memories, developed by WayForward Technology and released exclusively on the Vita in 2012. Book of Memories, I really just don't even know what they were going for with this game, and it's really the furthest from a Silent Hill game that you can get. And it really makes you wonder what the heck Konami was thinking when they were even just developing this game. Konami intended for this game to be oriented towards short multiplayer sessions on a handheld console, which, uh... It's a little bit of a departure from what we know of the Silent Hill games, and they basically got WayForward, who is a pretty good company, to develop this. Unfortunately, this game just absolutely falls flat, and while I'm not big on dungeon crawlers, I really didn't like this game. The plot is just strange. You play as a player-created protagonist, and it's your birthday, and you receive this mysterious book of memories, which will outline their entire life, and needless to say, it isn't the best ending, and so you're trying to change it, basically. The plot, unfortunately, is uh, pretty stupid, and it just doesn't really line up with what Silent Hill's been known for at all. The game does have multiple endings, at least, including a joke ending that references other Silent Hill games, but this plot, I thought, was, uh, yeah, wasn't exactly compelling, and then you create your own character, so the characters weren't, again, compelling. Now, when it comes to being a dungeon crawler, I'm not the biggest fan. I haven't played a ton of dungeon crawlers outside of Diablo and Torchlight, but this is one of the worst ones I've ever played. While the game looks and sounds fine enough, the actual gameplay, it just isn't a fun experience. You basically go around just killing everything and grinding and trying to get to the next area. There isn't all that much to it. You'll die occasionally and you'll have to grind some more to become more powerful. All the enemies are basically Silent Hill throwbacks, which I will give some props. That is kind of cool. I'll Pyramid Head and the ghosts show up from 2 and 4 and the monster, the boogeyman from freaking down Downpour. And this is one time where they can harmlessly show up and it doesn't affect the plot or anything, so I guess that's nice. The throwbacks are nice, but the actual core gameplay, I just didn't find it very fun. I didn't find it engaging. I thought it was just kind of bland and generic. I mean, there just wasn't really a lot going on here. I didn't feel particularly captivated. I wasn't engaged by it. The controls were pretty bad, especially whenever the touchscreen is involved. I didn't think collecting these puzzle pieces were very fun, and the checkpoints are pretty scarce in this game, so you'll, re you'll be replaying quite a bit of this game, and I just, yeah, I just didn't really have any fun with it. 
Now, I'm not going to act like I played this game for a ton of time because I didn't. I didn't finish it and I put it down pretty quick. I was done with it. I was like, this is just lame and repetitive and it's not at all what I want from a Silent Hill game. And I don't even think it's a very good dungeon crawler in its own right. Heard the game is pretty decently long, so uh, that's unfortunate. Anyway, I don't recommend anybody play this. It's a shame Way Forward just dropped the ball. They've made some pretty good games in the past, like the Shantae series. And uh, yeah, it's just really the worst Silent Hill game of them all and it's not worth trying. And so here we have one of the worst Silent Hill games. We have Silent Hill Homecoming, developed by Double Helix Games and released in 2008. I believe Silent Hill Homecoming is the worst in the main series. Now, Homecoming is about Alex, a discharged soldier who comes back to his hometown looking for his younger brother, and there is some really sinister things afoot. The story shows glimpses of being passable, but for the most part, the story in this game is just not good. It's generic, it's uninteresting, it just doesn't really go anywhere. The pacing is pretty bad, even for a Silent Hill game. And I wasn't big on the characters at all. I think Alex sucks. The other characters uninteresting. And Pyramid Head is here. Why is Pyramid Head here? This makes no sense in Silent Hill. There's no reason why Pyramid Head should be here. Bad story, premise, and characters aside, when you're actually playing the game, it kind of tries to be like the old ones where you explore around Silent Hill and this other town that Alex lives in and you solve puzzles and get into encounters and go through dungeons and then the nightmare world shows up and all that stuff. So I'll just get right into it. I think the biggest problem with this game though is the combat. It's just not good, plain and simple. Obviously it's not combat that I think belongs in a Silent Hill game, but aside from that it's slow, it's clunky, and not in a good way, and it's just not well implemented in the slightest. It isn't close to satisfying, you have to do like combos which sucks, and it really just generally feels like crap. Like I was like wow this, this just feels terrible, and they force you into so much combat in this game, maybe more than any other Silent Hill game. I will take Silent Hill 4's combat any day over this. I'll take the old game, like the original Silent Hill on PlayStation's combat over this. I just, I really hated this, and you have to do so much of it in this game. The exploration and puzzles in this game are pretty off and on. Sometimes, I will say, they're actually like half decent, especially towards the end of the game. Other times, though, it's just boring and empty. Exploring this town is painfully boring, like nothing happens, and Alex moves slow as dirt. And then speaking specifically for the puzzles, I mean, they're not the worst in the world, but they're probably the worst in the whole series. I just didn't really think any of them were very good. Now presentation wise, yeah this game looks very middling, sometimes it doesn't look very good and sometimes it looks like half decent for 08 but most of the time it looks pretty subpar. Is this game scary? <laughs> no, of course not. I got jump scared at one point due to bad enemy placement but that's it. And the soundtrack in this game, it isn't even very good. There's like one or two decent tracks but no, nah, it's pretty forgettable. At least the OG sound effects are there. And then this game also has an atrocious save system where it doesn't really save the game. It only saves the game every new area. If you turn the game off halfway through an area, which could be upwards of an hour by the way, you'll have to start the whole area over. I just... that's just bad. Now after playing Homecoming start to finish, all I gotta say is what a bad experience. This game was so dull, I was just not interested almost the entire time I was playing it thanks to its bad combat, its boring exploration, its generally lame puzzles, and pretty bad story and characters. It just did not do it for me at all. I was like, this game sucks. To make matters worse, I actually first tried to play this game on PC. I bought it for a couple bucks on the PC, not knowing that this is one of the worst PC ports ever made for anything. This is just atrocious. There are endless issues with this PC port. If for whatever reason you want to play Homecoming, stay as far away from the PC version. It just never ended with the issues. I ended up buying it on the Xbox One, on the Xbox Store, and playing through it that way. But I don't recommend any version of this game because I don't recommend the game at all. I know this game somehow has its fans, but I'm not one of them. I think this game is just totally not worth playing. So our next game is Silent Hill The Arcade, developed and published by Konami in 2007. This is a light gun shooter in the same vein as, say, House of the Dead. I think I've only ever seen this arcade cabinet once, and I certainly didn't play on it. Luckily, thanks to some computer wizards, you can actually play it on PC for free, which is what I did. The cursor is a bit off, but it's the full game here. And after playing through it, spending about an hour on it, I can say it's a fun little arcade shooter. Now, if you are taking this game all that serious or looking at it with a critical eye, I think you should probably just totally skip this game and pretend it doesn't exist. If you're looking for a fun little time where you blast all the enemies of Silent Hill, then 
I mean, this is fun enough. The game actually has a story, which is just kind of surprising. It starts out with a group of teenagers heading to Silent Hill, and one of them is related to a captain of a ship that I guess was in Silent Hill, and the ship sank like 75 years prior to the start of the game, and it left some kind of curse or something. These teenagers go here, typical Silent Hill stuff happens, monsters, cult, fog, the usual. I'm just kind of floored that there's even a story here. Like, what arcade game really has a even half-decent half fleshed out story this game does at least the voice acting is pretty funny it's it's pretty awful what's up in this this fog Shh. too what's that sound so when playing through the game it's a pretty typical arcade shooter where you're given a pistol with infinite ammo and you just blast everything and i mean everything that moves you move through a few crusty looking environments shooting familiar looking creatures and monsters occasionally coming across a fork in the road and then eventually fighting a boss the game has a ton of throwbacks to Silent Hill 1, 2, and 3 in its locations, enemies, and music. At least they understood Silent Hill enough to have the rusty locks and doors that can't be opened, which got a good kick out of me. Look, it would be really easy to rip this game a new one, it really would, but I'm just not going to do that. This game is a pretty harmless little fun arcade shooter that's supposed to be a fun little throwback to old Silent Hill games, and it was clearly made for, again, just some mindless arcade fun. I'm not going to explode that Pyramid Head and the sexy nurses are here, or that it combines locations from Silent Hill 2 and 3 when all of this was meant to symbolize a character's trauma and emotions. It's clearly here because it's iconic to the series. And you know what? This game is a fun little time. That's all I really gotta say. It's not one of the best arcade shooters I've ever played. I'm probably not ever going to come back to it. And if I ever see it in the wild, like when I visit Japan again, I probably wouldn't play it. But I think it's worth a download. And I mean, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. That's all I really got to say is it could have been so, so much worse. But should you even try it? Uh, that's really up to you and your preferences. And so here's probably the most interesting game on the list I'd throw in for funsies. Here we have PT, the initials for Playable Teaser, which was a psychological horror game developed by Kojima Productions and was planned to be Silent Hills. However, outside of this teaser, there's been nothing else on the game as it was cancelled. It was released as a free download on PS4 in 2014, and I remember when this came out, people were shitting bricks over how scary it was, over the themes that it had, and you know, I also tried it back then with the friends, and we also thought it was crazy and awesome and scary. And it's a shame all that crap went down with Konami and Kojima because this was probably the most interesting Silent Hill game since the fourth game and it could have easily been like one of the best Silent Hill games. But alas, it was cancelled. At least we got Death Stranding from it. But here we have this playable teaser still. You can't download it anymore from PSN, so... Unless you played it back when it came out, like almost 10 years ago, there's no way to really play this anymore. And you know, I remember playing through it and it was a pretty interesting horror game. There wasn't a ton to it. It was in first person and you just kind of repeated through the same suburban house just trying to solve the puzzle. But you would constantly get scared by the giant freaking ghost or whatever this creature was. And yeah, you were just trying to solve the puzzle and figure out what's up with this fetus anyway. The game definitely scared the crap out of me a few times. That was, that's for sure, at least back in the day. I haven't played it in quite some time. I have it here on the list because I'd rather play this playable teaser than pretty much everything I've talked about so far because it was more interesting. It had more going on. And out of all the later Silent Hill games, I would argue it's the scariest, which is kind of sad because it's just, again, a playable teaser. It doesn't really have all that much to it, but again, it was just incredibly interesting and had some really cool themes. And it's one of those games that is going to be basically lost to history. And it's kind of, if you were there and you played it when it came out, you know exactly what it's about and everyone else... It just kind of isn't in that bubble, which is a shame. I know people have tried to bring it back through mods and like other VR technology, but I don't think anything will ever replicate that original one. I wish I could recommend everybody tries it, but unfortunately I'm just not able to do that. And so, on to the next game. Alright, and so here we have the first post-team silent game, Silent Hill Origins, developed by Climax Studios, released in 2007 for the PSP and then eventually the PS2. Now a full mainline Silent Hill horror game on a handheld, certainly interesting, but I played the PS2 version. Now being the first Silent Hill not made by the original developers, I really went in with no expectation and really wasn't sure what I was getting myself into and after finishing it all I can say is, eh. I didn't really have much feelings walking away from it. The game is like alright at best. The game takes place before the first game, hence the Origins title, and really it recounts many of the notes and lore that the first game talks about. The accuracy though is actually questionable and a lot of dedicated Silent Hill fans have pointed out a bunch of inconsistencies. 
But if you really love the lore of like the first Silent Hill game, you get to see like all the major events with Alessa happen here in real time. So I guess that's cool. You play as Travis. He's just a trucker. He's on the road and he almost hits a little girl in the road and spins off. He then ends up in the town of Silent Hill. It's not exactly original. Now the story and premise and Travis as a character is fine enough, there just really isn't anything special here, it's just kind of there. I wouldn't say it's bad, but it doesn't exactly excel at anything either, it again is just there. Now when playing the game, I mean the game looks and feels enough like a Silent Hill game, and it is impressive for a PSP game. On the PS2 it certainly doesn't exactly look great, it doesn't look as good as say Silent Hill 2 or 3, but for a PSP game it looked good. And it retains most of the gameplay from the older Silent Hill games where you explore around, solve puzzles, and get into combat encounters with deadly creatures and the occasional scare. And when it comes to how scary this game is, I wouldn't say it's all that scary, it's not as scary as even Silent Hill 4, but it did get me one or two times. Really what got me was just the music and sound design, I think that is still really well done, they nailed that in the game. It did actually spook me with that sound design and the loud noises, it is still by the original composer, so of course that was going to be good, and that's the only thing that even came close to scaring me, the actual monsters or gameplay, no it didn't. The melee combat is probably the main focus of this game with the weapons breaking. It's not that great. The combat is pretty suspicious. I wouldn't say it's bad. I wouldn't say it's like awful like Homecoming, but it's nowhere near good or even as half decent as Silent Hill 4's is. And yeah, the weapons break after you use them enough, but they give you so many weapons that it doesn't even matter. Guns are here, but they're best used for the bosses. All of which are piss easy. The puzzles are like okay at best here. There's nothing amazing. It was generally pretty forgettable. I couldn't really tell you any of the puzzles from this game. I just kind of in one ear out the other. At least exploring around is fine enough. Some of the environments are pretty big though. In this game it's a little different. You'll actually switch between the regular and twisted world through these mirrors. I think this is actually a decent enough idea. But it means that you'll be exploring a relatively big area. And I mean, it was fine. Really, this game is just kind of fine. It doesn't excel at anything, and it isn't horrible, and it's nowhere near as bad as, say, Homecoming, and I didn't totally feel like I wasted my time playing it, but I just didn't feel like I really gained all that much either. The story is pretty whatever, the gameplay's pretty whatever, music and sound design is fine enough, and the presentation is alright, I guess, but I just didn't really feel much playing this game. Ultimately, I would say that this is a very middling, just quite mediocre experience. It's not a bad game, it's not trash, but it's not good either. It's shorter than the average Silent Hill and it just didn't really nail anything. Running this game on an emulator sucks too, the lighting's all weird with the flashlights, so it really just isn't even worth trying, like you could really skip this one. And so here we have the last mainline Silent Hill game, Silent Hill Downpour, developed by Vatra Games and released in 2012. Now I actually do remember when Downpour came out, I remember watching some Let's Players I watched at the time play it, and I didn't really think much of it then. After playing through it now, I still don't think all that much about it. And while I know that this game has a bit of a mixed reception in the Silent Hill community, I actually think that this game is pretty decent. So Downpour centers around Murphy Pendleton, a prisoner who is in a prison, he kills some random dude, and then he's being transferred to another prison. Something goes wrong on the bus though, the bus flips over, goes crazy, and he ends up escaping and entering into Silent Hill. Now Murphy I actually think is a pretty decent protagonist, the story really does have a strong start and it really does ask a lot of questions right off the bat. I think the general storytelling is actually good, I think the twists are decent here and it's cool to see Murphy grow as a character, you can really see him grow throughout. It's pretty clear though that the developers really like Silent Hill 2 as this game really goes for those Silent Hill 2 vibes with the story, the setting, the characters, and really how just everything progresses. I mean it even deals with our main character unlocking repressed memories, pretty similar. Despite all that, I think the story is pretty decent, I think the payoff at the end is actually alright as well. I was satisfied with this. Now obviously it's nowhere near as good as Silent Hill 2's, but I still like it. Now the gameplay of Downpour, it's generally alright. The game has much more of an open feel to it when compared to the other Silent Hill games. It still is that general Silent Hill gameplay though. You're exploring around, you're getting into combat encounters, the game tries to scare you but this game isn't scary at all, and you're solving puzzles. The game even shockingly has a puzzle difficulty which I didn't expect but that's a pretty cool throwback. You can actually explore Silent Hill as an open hub in this game and you can do even side missions in between the dungeon and nightmare sections. Yeah, side missions in a Silent Hill game, didn't think I'd ever say it. I personally didn't really do much of these, they just didn't really interest me all that much, but it's cool that they're here, and there's a bunch of little side stories here. 
Now, when you aren't in the game's open hub or world or whatever the thing is, you are in one of the dungeons. These dungeons are really what you would expect for a survival horror game and it doesn't do anything all that crazy or innovative, that's for sure. But you do have the nightmare sections. The nightmare sections are pretty different from these dungeons. Usually it involves you running away from some kind of black hole or whatever this thing is. These are okay. The chase sequences were better than Shattered Memories, but I just didn't really feel anything from them. This game also does have combat. The combat in this game is kind of like Homecoming, kind of like the old Silent Hill games. It's very clunky. You just kind of swing your weapon back and forth and you can charge it. Weapons do also break from enough use, which is a nice touch. For some reason, I found the combat, like, enduring. Like, yeah, it's clunky, it's a bit weird to use, and it takes some time to get used to, but it wasn't awful. I actually thought it was, like, decent. You can get pretty decent at it as well. Fighting more than one enemy though kinda sucks, and anything to do with guns is bad. Guns are just real bad in this game. Well, you know, I'd rather have this combat over Homecoming and Origins, so there's that at least. Like every other Silent Hill game, there is puzzles. The puzzles in this game are fine enough. Like I mentioned, there is puzzle difficulties, and there wasn't anything too crazy here, but I mean, it was better than Homecoming. Now, while everything seems pretty good to decent, something I think that does drag this game down a bit is the presentation. This game is just a complete train wreck when it comes to the presentation, and I played with the patch that came out months after the game released. This game just gets everything wrong with the presentation. The game looks terrible to begin with. Like, you could argue Silent Hill 3 and 4 look better than this game. The models are bad, the textures look like crap, a lot of the time it's just way too muddy, the frame rate is suspicious and it isn't even very good, the game constantly seemingly locks up before it loads a new area clipping issues, and really it just goes on and on. The presentation is just awful. The music is actually not done by the original composer and it's someone new. It's fine enough, nothing all that special, but that presentation just sucks. All in all, I would say Downpour is a bit of a mixed bag. I think the gameplay is pretty decent, the story is good, and that presentation is just awful. I think it's still alright though. I think it's one of the better later Silent Hill games. And despite the game's flaws, I did still in the end like the game and it did actually leave some kind of impression on me, unlike really all the other games before this. Should you play this game though? That's the big question. Do I recommend it? I would only recommend it to serious Silent Hill fans. If you really love Silent Hill and you've played enough of the original four games, then yes, this would be worth checking out. It has gotten pretty pricey though now. I actually got the Peggy version of this game on PS3, since PS3 isn't region locked, it was quite a bit cheaper than the US version, which is what I recommend anybody does who wants to save a quick buck. If you really like horror games in Silent Hill, yes, it's worth trying. Everyone else? Probably not though. But here is Silent Hill Shattered Memories, developed by Climax again and released in 2009 for the Wii and eventually the PS2 and the PSP. I think Shattered Memories is the best game post-Team Silent. Now this game is pretty different from what you would come to expect from a Silent Hill game. The game is kind of a reimagining of the original game with a lot of new twists. It retains the same premise, it's about Harry Mason trying to find his missing daughter in Silent Hill, but it's set in a totally different universe. Now this game is a lot more of a psychological thriller than a horror video game. There's not even any survival elements to this game really. There's two parts to this game and its story. One where you're being psychologically evaluated and you answer questions, and the other where you relive the flashbacks. The flashbacks are what I described, where you're looking for Cheryl in Silent Hill. Depending on your answers though in that psychological evaluation, and generally how you respond to the questions, events might totally play out differently in those flashbacks. Characters might be totally different, they might say different things, and certain actions can be actually different. And there's actually a bunch of different possibilities for not only the characters, but what happens in the story as well. The story is actually really solid in this game with a lot of world building. It's really not like the old Silent Hill games at all, but it's very good on its own. And I think it's actually the game's strongest aspect. The story, the characters, again, the world building, and just the atmosphere, it's actually really solid. The game's pacing and general storytelling I thought was very good. The ending left me very satisfied and I overall was actually quite happy with this story. Now like the story, the gameplay is very different from the other Silent Hill games. Really it's nothing like the other Silent Hill games. Like I mentioned, it's not even really a survival horror game. There's no survival elements, there's nothing to manage here. There's also no real combat in the game. There's enemies in the game, they chase you and you gotta run, but there's really no combat here. Instead, what the game does is double down on what else Silent Hill did, the exploring and solving puzzles. You'll be interacting with the world pretty much the entire time, just exploring every nook and cranny, making sure no stone is unturned, 
and solving puzzles. You'll be interacting with this world way more than you were in the other games as you can interact with basically everything in this game and Harry has something to say about really everything and depending how you answer those psychological evaluations, he might actually have something different to say. There's really a lot of detail when it comes to interacting with the world, and I think the puzzles are actually pretty good here. They're some of the best puzzles probably of the series. They probably are the best puzzles post-Team Silent. There's actually a lot of good ones here. And I like the ones that involve you having to call a number. I thought that was pretty cool, and it is, again, very different from all the other games in the series. Now, I played this game on the Wii. When you play it on the Wii, you have to, you know, use motion controls. You got to look around with the Wii remote. And I think that this actually works more than fine enough. I think this is probably the best way to play the game. It was the way that the developers originally intended. And playing the game on PS2 or PSP, especially on an emulator, is a big pain in the ass. I'd say the controls were generally pretty good. I didn't like that you could like peek through the doorway and you gotta like hold up to push it through all the way. There's really no reason for this, especially when you're not in one of the chase sequences is there's no monsters outside of the chase sequences. Speaking of these chase sequences, they weren't really scary at all. They were just kind of annoying. You just kind of run away from monsters and just try to get through this maze basically. There wasn't really all that much to it. Luckily it's not too prevalent in the game. It's not most of the game or anything like that. Most of the game you really are just exploring the world and solving puzzles. It is also interesting how the nightmare world is not all that rustic crap that usually shows up. It's actually ice. It's it's just very different and you know I actually can dig it. I like how it's different. It doesn't have to be like the old Silent Hill games. It can totally try to be something different and this game is something different. Now when it comes to the presentation, I think it's pretty solid too. For the Wii, it looks pretty good. Everything animates pretty well. Frame rate's fine and yeah, I thought it was good. Now, not only do I think Shattered Memories is the best post-Team Silent game, but it is actually just a pretty good game in general, and I can recommend it to anybody who likes Silent Hill, anybody who likes horror, or if you want a psychological thriller, this is totally up your alley, too. If you even like adventure games, you'll probably like this, too, as it really does kind of scratch that itch as well. This is a pretty good game that is worth playing. It is quite underrated, I would say. A lot of people just immediately throw this game away because it's after Team Silent, and I think that's a shame because it is actually worth playing. So here is Silent Hill 4 The Room, which seems to be people's least favorite of the team Silent games. Silent Hill 4 The Room has you play as Henry, a pretty normal dude who lives in his apartment, nothing really different from me. And one day he just can't get out of his apartment, there's chains all over the door, he can't get out the windows, he's stuck in there. He's in there a few days, goes a little crazy, has some nightmares, and this big ass hole shows up in his bathroom. And he goes out of it, he ends up in the, some other dimension, world, town, I don't know. But he's just trying to figure out how the hell to get out of his apartment. The story's pretty interesting, the premise is decently interesting the chains all over the door it's pretty iconic and I think by the end of it it actually really does pay off I wish the pacing of the story was a lot better as the beginning is very slow but again the payoff is good at the end couldn't say the same about Henry though I thought he was a pretty weak protagonist one of the weakest in the series there's just really not a lot going on he's just this quiet introverted dude who lives in an apartment with a potentially creepy backstory as he does kind of spy on his neighbor the other characters are pretty solid, though most of them are decent to good, and I wanted to see what would happen. When it comes to playing Silent Hill 4, it is different from all the other Silent Hills as well. There's really two parts to the gameplay. There's your apartment, where it's in first person, and it's kind of more like an adventure game with horror elements and some of the game's best scares, and outside the apartment, which is what you would expect with a Silent Hill game. Mostly fixed camera angles, clunky combat, survival elements, and getting generally scared. And oftentimes, these two gameplay styles are actually interwoven for some really creative puzzles. The actual core gameplay I really don't have much issue with. It's pretty similar to what you've played if you've played the first couple Silent Hill games. The combat has improved. It is quite a bit better. You have more melee weapons and the game does force you into combat a lot more. It's not terrible. It just takes some time to get used to. The enemies in this game are some of the scariest enemies in the entire series. Like These things are just downright terrifying in terms of their design. It's a, it's a shame that really they're not difficult to fight wasn't really ever challenged by the enemies and the main enemies are the ghosts and you just run from them since you can't even kill them. They are kind of scary though. And when you aren't getting into combat, usually just exploring or solving puzzles, I think the areas in this game are pretty decently designed. Dungeons are spooky scary, but I'm not really a fan that you have to repeat almost every single one later, but they're still alright. The puzzles are good, some of the best in the series. Whenever the room is brought in, I think it's a lot more interesting. It's in the apartment though where you access the item box. You can't hold unlimited items like the other games, you can only hold 10. You have to put everything else in this box and you gotta do a lot of back and forth with this and I really don't like this. I think it messes with the pacing and I just did not like going back and forth to access basic items. And while we're on the subject of issues, it classic Silent Hill experience, I think the game's pacing really is just kind of 
terrible. It shoots itself in the foot, and it really is like a crawl when it comes to the pacing. It just takes way too long to get really interesting outside of that initial premises. You're just kind of meandering through these dungeons, going back and forth between the rooms solving puzzles and the fairly easy combat encounters and to be honest the first half i was just kind of getting tired of it. i was like when is something interesting going to happen and then halfway through the game it gets a bit more interesting and it stays interesting enough for the rest of the game but that first half of the game it just felt really slow at least the presentation is pretty solid the game looks pretty good and the music is still as excellent as ever not as good as one two or three but it is good i know that this game is a bit more divisive amongst silent hill fans and it's really hard to talk about this game quickly because there's just so much going on with it it's just too different from all the main Silent Hill games like the absence of a flashlight, radio, or not having unlimited item space and the having to go back and forth between the room and the emphasis on combat that the other games didn't have. And while I think yes, this is different from those first couple Silent Hill games, I think what's here is still good enough, it works, the game has a couple scares and the general gameplay is more than capable enough, but I could easily see why somebody wouldn't like this game. It doesn't have very good first impressions. To be honest, the first time I played this game I actually put it down and didn't play it for like a year because my initial impressions were just like wow this isn't what I thought it would be and I didn't really like it all that much after finishing it it still really isn't what I thought it would be I still don't really know what to make of this game and so should you try this game if you like the first couple Silent Hill games or you like horror games in general I think it's worth trying I think it's one of those games that a lot of people are gonna have a lot of different opinions about and some people you know I've seen it they really like Henry the music the atmosphere the vibe and some people really dislike this game they think it's too different from the other Silent Hill games they don't like what's going on here they think it's repetitive and we're rather play a different game in the series. This game certainly has its flaws, as I mentioned, the pacing, it's a bit of a slow burn, it's not as scary, you have a character that I don't really like, no puzzle difficulty in the combat while capable doesn't really do anything for me. It's not bad, but it's not very good either. I think it's worth trying for anybody that likes horror games, and you might be very surprised with it, or you might be very disappointed. Either way, I think you're going to have a very interesting experience with this one. And so here is the original Silent Hill, developed by Team Silent, put out in 1999 for the PS1 by Konami. The original Silent Hill, all these years later, I think still is actually pretty scary, and the gameplay still does hold up. Sure, it looks a bit dated, but playing through the game... It still had me on the edge of my seat and I still genuinely did have a very good time with it. The original Silent Hill follows Harry Mason as he searches for his missing adopted daughter in the fictional American town of Silent Hill and he stumbles upon basically this cult and I'll just leave it at that. I think the story and general premise are incredibly well done in this game. I like how you just play as just kind of an everyman. Like, this isn't some guy who's military trained or some superhero. No, he's just a regular dude looking for his daughter who stumbles upon this nightmare. I think this game has an incredible atmosphere that still holds up, and I think the intro is one of the strongest intros in any horror game. Okay, besides the game's engrossing atmosphere, I think one of the first things to bring up is the graphics with this game. Yes, the game is old, it has aged, it is dated, it is a PS1 game, but I think that these graphics really still let you get engrossed into the world. I think it generally is pretty immersive. The game has a ton of fog to hide its rendering, and I think this really does work to the game's betterment. I like how you can't really tell what everything is, because I think it just honestly makes it scarier. When you can't really see what something is, your imagination just kind of takes over, and I think that's some scary shit. I think the graininess and just kind of griminess that this game is able to invoke thanks to those PS1 graphics really adds to it. And if you weren't going to play this game because the game looks outdated and you think, oh, it looks old, it can't be scary, then... You're lost, that's all I gotta say. Now when it comes to actually playing the game, I think it also holds up as it is that typical survival horror gameplay that was really prominent in the late 90s and even is still around nowadays where you explore around, you collect items, you don't have regenerating health, you get into enemy encounters with some scary stuff, you got some clunky combat, the occasional puzzle to solve, and really you're just kind of exploring around really taking in the world's atmosphere and getting scared. I think the gameplay is still good. Don't get me wrong, it does have some dated parts to it. The controls can feel pretty dated and the camera can be disorienting sometimes on purpose and a few areas aren't the best like the sewers, but I think it still is pretty good. This game is also dark, like really dark, like pitch black a lot of the time dark. And I think the darkness along with this game's just straight up terrifying soundtrack that doesn't even sound like music, just like horrifying noises put together, it really creates a scary atmosphere. I would argue that this game might be the scariest in the whole series still. Like, none of the other games have gone so out of their way to try to scare the crap out of you. Maybe the third game, but I think this game might take the crown. 
by the end of it, I was really dreading going into any new room, getting into any combat encounter, and I really just was almost ready for the game to end. It had really gotten under my skin, and it's definitely a psychological horror game, and, you know, I still think about it even nowadays. I'm just like, damn, that was one scary-ass game. And I think it's just incredibly impressive how this game is still able to scare me, even in the 2020s, a PS1 game. Like, all I gotta do is give this game mad props. The original Silent Hill is a classic for a reason. It's my favorite horror game on the PS1. Sorry, Dino Crisis. And I think that if you like horror games, you really owe it to yourself to try the original Silent Hill. And if you think that the game isn't good because it's old and it's outdated, I think you should really reconsider that stance and just give the game a shot. I played it on my PS1 Classic, but I know it's on the PS3 as a PS1 Classic, and of course you could just always emulate it or pay a boatload of money like the rest of the games on this list. But it really is totally worth playing. And so here is Silent Hill 3 releasing on the PS2 in 2003. Now Silent Hill 3 is quite possibly the scariest video game I've ever played, but it's also like one of my favorite games of all time at this point. This game really nails everything from Silent Hill 1 in just about every aspect. The game is about Heather Mason, a troubled young lady with a complicated past, and I'll leave it at that, and she's just trying to go home when all of a sudden the world all around her just kind of falls apart and she needs to figure out what the hell is going on, and along the way she meets some interesting interesting folk. The story of this game is pretty good for the most part, I won't lie, some parts of it can seem a bit silly or stupid or even just really far-fetched, however despite that, I think the game has a gripping narrative that kept me thoroughly intrigued, and I like the mysteries that this game provides. The characters are pretty solid also. Heather is arguably, in fact I would just say she's the best protagonist in the series, she's my favorite protagonist in the series. I really liked her. The voice acting and direction in this game is a bit strange though, like it, it really just is odd, but I think it kind of added to the game. But one thing that this game absolutely slam dunks is the atmosphere and the vibes. This game just gets it. It creates a tense, evil, scary atmosphere that legit got under my skin way faster than the first game did. And all these years later, I still think about it. I'm just like, dang, this game is so for foreboding. It's dark and just, it's so scary. And the presentation, obviously it looks quite a bit better than Silent Hill 1, but I think that it really holds up still. The character models are great, the lighting, this game is super dark, but when it does have lighting, it's very well done, and you can't really complain about the presentation here. The music, oh, the soundtrack is just really, really good in this game, but also there's plenty of tracks that literally just, again, get under your skin. The gameplay of Silent Hill 3 is basically the same as Silent Hill 1 and 2. You explore around these generally decent sized environments, just trying to figure out what to do next. You're collecting items, you're getting into combat encounters with these really scary looking monsters, and the combat in this game is really not messing around. You probably just want to avoid the enemies, to be honest, or you're solving the puzzles. Or in this game, you're really just trying to figure out which doors you can actually open. You can't open like 95% of the doors in this game, which is humorous at first, but eventually it really does add to the atmosphere that you really just are kind of screwed over and that none of these doors actually open. But when it comes to the actual not door related puzzles, I think it is pretty good here as well. Some of the best puzzles in the series, and I figured out most of them actually by myself. So I liked them. I thought it was good. Now you thought the original Silent Hill was dark, oh Silent Hill 3 says hold my beer because this game really is one of the darkest games I've ever played. Like it is very frequent where the only light source you have in the game is Heather's flashlight. There's a few parts where there's some light but most of the game there is very little light. And I personally, again, I think it adds to the vibes, I think it adds to the atmosphere. I'm able to get engrossed a lot easier when it's really dark and it's able to really just kind of scare me. I think this game has a number of points to it, like a certain scene with a mannequin that just absolutely still scare the crap out of me. And like the first game, it really does get under your skin and by the end of it, I was just kind of ready for it to end. I was like, well, I've had about enough of this game just getting really under my skin and just kind of set settling in on me and I was just like, oh, I didn't want to just get rid of the game. I want to be done with it, but I really also wanted to see what happened and I think that the story totally pays off and I think that the atmosphere pays off and I think that the game is actually still very good. Now while I think the game is of course a great horror game, it's not perfect, no horror game really is. I don't think the mall is a very good dungeon in this game and it's the first dungeon which is unfortunate so I could see someone not having the best first impressions. The game is not as long as some of the other Silent Hill games but I think the pacing actually makes up for it and I think it stays incredibly interesting and scary and tense throughout which I don't think say Silent Hill 4 was able to achieve which is longer. 
But all in all, I think the game is totally worth playing, especially if you like horror games. If you like horror games, this is really a must play. Gameplay is still good. Presentation is good. Soundtrack is great. I think the game really has aged remarkably, and I think that it doesn't really matter how old the game gets at this point. I think it's still going to age incredibly well, and I think that atmosphere, it really just is legendary, and it, again, doesn't matter how old the game is. The game will still be able to pull off these tense vibes and nightmare inducing atmosphere that you're still going to think about when you're going to sleep at 3 a.m. One of my favorite games probably of all time, totally recommend it. Alright, it might have seemed like a foregone conclusion, but I think the best of the Silent Hill games is yes, Silent Hill 2 released initially in 2001. I think Silent Hill 2 is one of the best horror games of all time and it's again one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, Silent Hill 2 really is the fan favorite, and what is there even to say about it at this point in time on the internet? So many people have just kind of gushed about it, they made hours long retrospectives about it, and here I am trying to talk about the game in a couple minutes. It's Silent Hill 2, it's one of the most legendary horror games, really just legendary games at this point that people online love to cream their pants for, and with good reason, because the game is actually hella good. The basic premise isn't all that complicated. You play as James Sunderland and he receives a letter saying to go to Silent Hill from his allegedly dead wife who passed away a couple years ago and he goes because why not? Now the story and characters and premise of Silent Hill go so, so much deeper than that. Like this is really scraping the surface. Like it goes really deep and James is a really complex character. The other characters are complex too and really I'm just going to stop there because you could go on forever when you talk about this game's story, the symbolism, the emotions, like it is really deep, it is to the point that it's so deep you won't even see it in other games. Like there are very few games that have this level of complexity and depth to them and it really just creates this whole mood, this vibe that the other Silent Hill games don't have. Like it's not the scariest Silent Hill, I'll be the first to admit it. I think Silent Hill 1 and 3 are scarier than 2. Now 2 is still scary, don't get me wrong, 2 is a scary game, I'd say it's a hell of a lot scarier than say 4 or any of those later Silent Hill games, but 1 and 3 are the scarier games, but this game thanks to its complexity, its mood, its characters, the vibe, all that stuff, it allows me to say that I think it is the best atmosphere of all of the games. And the presentation really adds to it as well, as I think the game still looks pretty good. One of the best looking games from 01, despite the limitations, despite the age, I think it still looks hella good. This game has a ton of fog to it, way more than the first and third game, but I really do like the fog. I think it again, it really adds to it. The models look pretty good. The enemies just look weird as hell. The way they move, the way they animate, oh, it's creepy. And then the soundtrack is just legendary. It really is absolutely legendary. It's one of my favorite soundtracks to any game. I think a lot of the music is really beautiful in this game. It is fantastic. And then when it's trying to scare you, oh, it absolutely has that creepy ass stuff from the first and third game where it's just noises put together and I couldn't even really call it music. But I can legitimately say I regularly listen to the music of Silent Hill 2. It is actually just so good. And then when you're actually playing it, yeah, it's not crazy different from Silent Hill 1 or 3. It's still a survival horror game. You explore around rather large areas. You have the entire town of Silent Hill to actually explore. And then a bunch of smaller dungeons, basically, to explore around. And you just get items, put items together, use items with other items, whether it's in the environment or in your inventory solve puzzles and then of course there's the enemies and there's even bosses here as well the enemies are all just super creepy the way that they move about the way that you go after them it's just it's very unsettling and the enemies of Silent Hill 2 have just really always creeped me out and then the bosses in this game this game actually does really have bosses the third game is bosses too but I think the bosses are better in 2 that's for sure and I mean, they're really just iconic. I mean, Pyramid Head, he's probably one of the most iconic things from Silent Hill in general. He's here in Silent Hill 2 where, you know, it makes sense. And yeah, I just love everything to do with the enemy design, the bosses, Pyramid Head, really what it all means to James. I, I think it's just all incredibly well done. The puzzles, to go back to them for a second, I think they're pretty good. Also, I wouldn't say they're some of the series' best, but they're all pretty decent. The dungeons, as I like to call them, I think are some of the best in the series. You know, we got the hospital, the apartments, and even more. And then there's, of course, the nightmare variations, which are just really, again, unsettling and just kind of creepy. The game does get dark. It doesn't get anywhere near as dark, though, as 1 or 3. It still does have some light to it. It isn't just the flashlight for most of the game, which is nice. The game still has plenty of scary moments to it and I found myself feeling very tense at a number of points in the game as well. And like the other games, you'll really be dreading that next enemy encounter. It will really get under your skin. It doesn't get anywhere near as under your skin as 
3 does, where it's just, geez, that's a scary game, but it still absolutely does, and you'll be really engrossed by the entire story, and you really want to see what happens. At least I did. I really wanted to see what happened. Now, I also got to really shout out the endings to this game. I didn't really bring up the endings for the other games. The All the games have good endings, multiple endings, but Silent Hill 2 has easily the best endings of the whole series. And it's not just because I think it has the best story in the series. Now the gameplay of Silent Hill 2, it isn't revolutionary, it doesn't do anything all that complex, it's not a super complex survival horror game, you aren't managing your resources hella, the puzzles aren't crazy difficult, it, again, it doesn't do anything all that complex, but I think that the atmosphere, the vibes, the music, the story, the characters, the symbolism, all of that really just comes together to make a fantastic experience that I think anybody who likes horror or adventure games or a great story should absolutely try. Silent Hill 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. I think it's one of the best horror games of all time. While I don't think it's the scariest in the series, I think it still is a fantastic game, and it really is a beautiful game. Like, the aesthetics, the again, the vibes, I'm saying the same thing here over and over because Silent Hill 2 really just is that good. I know a lot of people just love this game to death and I also pretty much do as well. I think that if you're going to play Silent Hill 2, don't even think twice about it. Just go play the game. It is a fantastic game that is totally worth playing. It's the very rare horror game that is not only scary but thought-provoking, emotional, saddening. Really, it's just amazing. But that's it for this video. That's all of the Silent Hill games out at this time. Ranked worst to best. Let me know your favorite down below. We're going to be getting some more Silent Hill games in the next couple of years. And uh, I don't really know how to feel about that. But we'll see. We'll see how they go. That's for sure. Everyone have a wonderful day.